Hey guys, Doja Wolf here. Today I want to talk to you about five biggest mistakes I see delegators making when they're delegating to Cardano stake pools. These are just some observations I've made and I think that uh, you guys might find them helpful. All right, the fifth biggest mistake that I see delegators doing is moving stake too early. So the slot lottery is a wicked animal. And what I mean by that is a pool can have a very, very bad epoch in, in relevance to the number of slots they've been elected to be as leader, or they can have a very great epoch. And on average, these kind of average out to be a, a normal or standard amount based on stake, but some days can be really, really great, and some days can be really, really bad. And so if you're just looking at a pool's performance based on one or two epochs of rewards and you're moving around, you're not really giving yourself a good data set to make a decision. Now, psychologically, we feel better when we take action, regardless of whether or not that action hurts us or not. So uh, my advice is, is to find a pool based on good reputation. And we'll talk about some of the other factors or you can check out some of my other videos. But once you have a pool that's got a competent operator and good reputation and they're making blocks, you want to stick with them for a while so you can kind of understand what they're doing for you. It's a pretty bad strategy just to go ahead and change pools. You kind of want to ride it out because any pool you go to is going to have really, really good days and really, really bad days. Now, it really can hurt you if you're jumping around pool to pool just based on what a single epoch's worth of rewards give you because that is absolutely no indication of what the pool's going to put out on over a long-term um, spectrum relevant to performance. Some days are pretty bad and some days are pretty good, so you want to keep that in mind. Okay, so number four is not knowing which red flags to look out for. So some pools have uh, ticker identities that are representing different organizations. They're somewhat misleading. So you wanna make sure that the pool you're delegating to is who you think it is. Another red flag would be an extremely low pledge. Now I understand there's operators out there that might not have the financial resources as other operators, but bring great skill. And I'm not talking about your 10 or 15K pledge pools. I'm talking about your 500 ADA or your 1K ADA those types of pools. When you look at that, that's a clear red flag that that operator doesn't have a lot of skin in the game. And if they don't have a lot of skin in the game, then, you know, it can kind of be a territory for where they're not taking your best interests at heart. Another red flag to look out for are 0% fee promotions. So a lot of pools that are listed as 0%, this is a very temporary promotion and that's their value prop to try to pull in stake. Now, if you know about fees, it really doesn't matter between a 1% or a 5% pool on a, on a fee scale much. It translates to less than a quarter of a percent off your ROS annually. So pool operator performance comes in way, way, way more importantly than fees. So the 0% kind of scheme, that, that's one thing is, is, is it's not as good as it seems, first of all. And second, you've got an operator that's guaranteeing to operate at a certain rate for, for a while. So they're basically gonna be operating at a loss for the most part. Now there is a mid fee associated with that and that can cover infrastructure costs, but that operator is not gonna have much resources to put time, because time is money too, into their operation. And that's not in all cases, of course, but that's just a red flag to kind of watch out for. Another thing too with the 0% fee pools is some of them, they're somewhat misleading as in they'll have, you know, very small text written on their website, which expresses when they're going to start charging fees and what those fees might be, if at all. Or you may have to scroll down in the wallet. If you're looking at a description in the wallet, make sure you scroll down and just take a good look at what that pool's doing. And then, you know, if you can try and check out that pool's website, check out its social profile, and that'll give you a good idea how much depth is behind the pool in itself, which can be, you know, good green flags or red flags. Number three, the third biggest mistake I, I see delegators making is not delegating to multiple pools. It kind of sucks right now because we've got to create a whole separate wallet. There are multi-pool delegation features coming to Daedalus, which is good. But for now, you have to create a whole nother wallet to do this. But I recommend doing it because spreading your delegation out across two or three pools or even more, however you want to do it, you've got a diverse portfolio and you're going to be less prone to the potential negative side of the slot lottery. It's less of a gamble, it's more steady rewards to delegate to multiple pools. And you also run the risk is that if, if your pool does go down for one reason and you're only in one pool, instead of you know taking a full hit on rewards, you're only taking a third hit on rewards if you're delegated evenly, assuming of course. There's a lot of strategy in, in delegating to multiple pools. You know, obviously saturation is one thing and that's something that I'll get into in the next uh, topic a little bit. The number two largest mistake I think I, I'm seeing delegators make is this misconception that more blocks equals more rewards. 
So if you see a pool that's making a whole lot more blocks and Daedalus is unfortunately ranking this way, that, that pool has a delegation which those rewards are spread out upon. Now the blocks in itself don't work like ITN. It's not like the pool's making rewards per block for its pool. It's, it's making rewards for the network and those are being distributed based on stake with a bonus to overperformance and, and, a, and a hit for underperformance, meaning if a pool mints more blocks than what they're expected by the protocol based on stake, that's overperformance. And if they mint less than what's expected by the protocol based on stake, that's underperformance. So it's not like if they miss a block, they're technically deemed for performance, but that, that means a pool has to hit their blocks to capitalize on the highs and to make the best of the lows. So that's kind of, if that makes sense, but a pool, just because he's, he's minting 50 or 60 blocks in Epoch doesn't mean that he's going to perform better than a pool that's minting five or six. So that's something to keep in mind. And also pools that are minting more blocks are closer to saturation. So they're less set and forget pools as well. So if your pool becomes saturated, you're losing money and you, gotta, you, you should move very quickly. And so the number one mistake I see delegators making, and that is choosing a pool based on fees. As I said before, the fees between a 1% pool and a 5% pool are less than a quarter of a percent to a delegator's annual return on staking which is nearly negligible in comparison to pool operator performance. A pool operator that's hitting all their blocks is going to have, or most of them, because sometimes there's slot battles and that's just, you know, on average a 50-50 chance. But in general, a pool operator that's up, that's in line and that's hitting all their blocks or the, as many as they possibly can, they're going to optimize the good slot lotteries and they're going to make the best out of the worst ones. And so that's going to average out to better performance because that's a metric that really truly affects rewards. So choosing a pool based on fees alone isn't the best idea. You can have a pool with 5% fees that's waxing a 1% pool. And so I've got, you know, data from that from the ITN from certain regards. So you guys kind of want to be real cautious about not taking the easy route and just clicking a button because you see low fees. I mean, do your research. This is money. If you guys, you know, if it makes you feel better, then that's one thing. But if you're here to, to monetize your rewards, you want to go ahead and delegate with a rock star and hang with them and split up your wallet. Definitely split up your wallet between multiple rock stars and uh, you'll do well. All right, guys, that's all. I didn't want to take up too much of your time today. I appreciate everybody. If you like what I'm doing, you can help support me. You can delegate to Frog, Frog2, or Wolf. And until next time, we'll catch you later. All right, bye.